I'm Christina Ibama. I am the technical sales manager uh, for Trace Genomics, and I'm based out of Orange City. Um, so I am the technical sales manager um, helping out Farmers Co-op. First simple question, Christina, what, what is Trace Genomics? Trace Genomics is a company that does whole genome or DNA sequencing on the soil. Uh, so we are uh, using that technology to measure the microbes and the pathogens that are in the soil. Trace Genomics, what is your guys' overall company goal? Like? Our goal is farmer profitability. Um, so we want to make sure that our growers, um, the growers of FCS, can be more profitable by understanding the pathogen load that's in their soil, you know, what hybrid should I be placing, what seed treatments, um, soybean inoculants, um, things like that that you can make decisions on um, based on the soil DNA and also um, the microbes of the soil. So how many um, phosphorus solubilizers out there and then how can I make decisions um, on my farm for that? What products should I be placing based on that soil information um, and the DNA of the microbiome? Some benefits to the grower, go into maybe a little bit more detail <clears throat> from utilizing trace genomics. So we have uh, seven key decision areas that um, we talk about. The first side is on the nutrient side of things. So um, that includes uh, phosphorus, uh, trace phos, and how can we be more efficient with the phosphorus that we're um, putting out on the field? So um, whether it's utilizing products like chelators, um, biologicals, you know, how can I place the right biological in the right spot uh, is huge and um, really just increasing that efficiency on um, the phosphorus fertilizer side of things. And then in addition to that, we just released our Trace N report. Um, so that includes measurements for Brady rhizobia, japonicum, so on the soybean side of things, placing soybean inoculants um, and where those would best be utilized. Also, um, we can measure the microbes that are responsible for nitrification and um, urease. Um, and then uh, we also have uh, the seed solution guide. So that is really focusing on the pathogens. So now that I know what pathogens and to what extent they are in the soil, um, and then based on our regional benchmarks, uh, where do I fit compared to that region? Um, and so with that, you can make decisions for placing the right hybrids in the right spots, um, seed treatments, fungicides, um, all those things can be used um, to make sure that we're putting the right products in the right spots. Over the last few years, it seems like there's been a, a big push, obviously, on the biological side of things. And some of these, these products that maybe we haven't used much in the past, and there's not a whole lot of experience with it. Some years you'll maybe find something that hits a home run, but then the next year, maybe not. Or even in the same year, a certain field does really well, a certain field doesn't. My assumption would be like with Trace Genomics, we're able to, to, to utilize your guys' services and that's gonna be able to help us place some of these newer products that maybe we don't have a, a lot of experience with and try to place them in, a, in an area where maybe we're gonna have a, a lot better chance to see a positive return. To go into more detail on it too, the thing about whole genome sequencing and DNA sequencing is that we're not just looking at the known microbes. So we really only know about 1% of microbes. That's, those are the microbes that have been identified. We know them. Um, an example of that is like Bacillus um, subtilis or Bacillus amyloliquifocians. Um, those are two microbes that we know are phosphorus solubilizers. So we know that gene. So then when we run it through our sequencer, not only are we looking for um, what that microbe or pathogen is, but for microbes, I can also get to that gene level. So I know that Bacillus subtilis and Bacillus amyloliquifocians are known solubilizers. So I can take that gene and match it through the rest of the microbiome to find out how many other phosphorus solubilizers are out there. But it doesn't do you any good if I came to you and said, all right, you've got 0 0.047 parts per billion of phosphorus solubilizers in your soil. That's not gonna do you any good because you can't take that anywhere. So then what we do is we put that up against our benchmarks and say, okay, based on the other samples in our system, this is where you fit, good or bad. And then you'll get, um, that number will be put as a percentage um, of the distribution and you'll see if you're in the red, yellow, or green. 
Um, and that really helps you know if I'm in the green, um, either if I'm already using a biological, it's doing its job and that's proving why we're using it, or I have a lot of them in my soil already. So if I have another field that's in the red, I definitely wanna place that biological in that field because I don't have a lot of those microbes. And in order to see that increase and see that um, soil become even healthier and stronger um, to grow um, better crops and be more profitable, we can place a biological there and we should see a difference. And so that's the big thing is knowing where to place the right products based on what the product's function is, um, mode of action, all of those things in the right spot based on the soil DNA. From the disease aspect of things and on the seed solutions guide, could you go into a little bit more detail on that? So our seed solutions guide, um, in the background, we are measuring over 225 different pathogens across over 70 different crop types. So in Northwest Iowa, on the corn side of things, we're measuring pathogens like tar spot, Goss's wilt, um, anthracnose, uh, and on the soybean side of things, white mold, uh, SCN, corn rootworm for uh, corn as well. Um, and there, I think we have t around 20 for both corn and soybeans. So there's a lot of information that comes from that. And using that, you can use it to make sure you're placing the right hybrids in the right spot. So, so Trace and I haven't had a chance to like dive into that one <laughs> a whole lot yet, but I guess, could you give us a, a rundown of what, what that is and how, how that could benefit a grower utilizing that information? Absolutely. So the Trace N report is looking um, at both the chemistry and the biology side of things. So on the chemistry side of things, we're reporting um, both nitrate and ammonium. Um, and then in addition to that, on the biology side of things, we're measuring the microbes whose functions are for urea volatilization, um, nitrification, denitrification, and um, Brady rhizobia for soybeans. On the other side of things, we are also measuring the amount of free living nitrogen fixers. So with more and more nitrogen products out there, more biologicals for nitrogen, um, all of those things, how can we just measure what, how many free living nitrogen fixers are out there? And then those are great ways to place, you know, whether it's biologicals or some of those other nitrogen products. Like most times when, when you take a sample, you're looking for egg count. You guys are obviously looking at DNA. Mm -hmm. So that's a differentiator for you guys compared to everybody else. So I guess, tell us a little bit more. Soybean cyst nematode technology is something that we worked on um, for over two years with Iowa State to make sure that it was an accurate uh, measurement and that it was something that was going to be useful for farmers as well. So we worked with Iowa State. We sent them several samples that we also ran through our whole genome sequencing here at Trace. And um, where they found high egg counts, we also found high DNA presence. So we also had situations where they didn't find an egg count, but we still saw high DNA presence or some DNA presence. And that was because their test is specifically looking for those eggs. So you need to have an egg in order to find it in that sample. But using the trace data, because we're looking at the DNA, we are looking for any part of that DNA. So it could be a live uh, soybean cyst nematode, it could be dead, it could be body parts from it, it could be waste. Um, if there's any sign of that soybean cyst nematode, um, our test is sensitive enough to pick that up. Either you have an SCN problem or you don't. And then based on that, you can choose what um, soybean uh, variety or hybrid that you need to be putting out there too. Um, do you need to switch to a different one if you have high levels or uh, if you can add a seed treatment or something too? Just gives you better insight to make more informed decisions. Another measurement that we can do is measuring the mycorrhiza. So the mycorrhiza are like root hair extensions. So um, depending on how many mycorrhiza microbes are in your soil, um, you know, that's a good indicator for how strong our roots are, how, how big our roots are. So uh, if we don't have a lot of them, maybe that's something that we can increase and um, help those microbes um, and improve the soil quality. So if you're interested in uh, doing trace sampling, you can uh, contact your FCS rep, and then that process is very similar to your typical grid samples or chemistry samples. Mm -hmm.